Hey y'all, it's Trey, good to see you again. It's getting a little chilly here in Texas for some weird reason, but Texas weather doesn't make any sense, so that's why I've got the fashionable turtleneck sweater or shirt going on here. Also really cool news, this month marks six months at my first ever salary job, so that's like a, you know, this is a cool adult life milestone that we've got going on here, as well as, I have now been making these reaction videos for over a year, so let's just celebrate that little moment, all right? We're at 9,000 subscribers. That's crazy to me. Now, today's video is going to be a reaction to Christina Aguilera's fifth studio album, Back to Basics. It was released in August of 2006 as a double album through RCA Records, so it's a pretty long one. I love Christina, but Stripped, This Album, and Bionic are all like 25 songs long, and it just like keep getting longer and longer, and it's, these are long recording sessions. You guys are only gonna get like a 30 to 40 minute video, but I'm spending hours on this thing. Woo! Now for some pre-show notes about the album that I found in my research. So this album has sold about six million copies worldwide. It earned Christina a Grammy Award nomination for Best Pop Vocal Album. She won the Grammy for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance with Ain't No Other Man. I love that song. And then she was also nominated the following year for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance with Candyman. This album was lyrically inspired by some life events. Uh, she married Jordan Bratman in 2005, and this album was recorded in the first four months of 2006, so her love life and her marriage were fresh on her mind. She switched up her look for this one. Again, she switches up her look a lot, but Stripped was, you know, her more authentic self, and so she stepped into a new alter ego that is called Baby Jane, apparently taken from the 1962 horror film Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Interestingly enough, the character Baby Jane is a former Hollywood star whose career declines and then she resorts to alcoholism. Which is very interesting when you consider the trajectory of Christina's personal life and career in the years after Back to Basics. Um, because there was some public intoxication and she divorced her husband Jordan in 2011. And then just to set the tone for this album sonically, Christina told Billboard magazine in an interview that she was dissatisfied with contemporary music as technology, quote, has advanced itself so anybody can be a singer. So Aguilera took musical inspiration from her old school jazz, blues, and soul icons from the 1920s through the 50s because they were in her head the image of the people who truly could sing, who really had voices. Her comments about modern music are very interesting when you consider that her follow-up album to this after her greatest hits album was Bionic, which celebrated electronic music. Interesting, you know, food for thought. So, this is gonna be a lot of music, a lot of songs. So let's just dive into this reaction video, all right? Track number one, the intro. Back to basics. It, 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 it is now time the one and only. I like it. There never will be another. Here must stand a day in tribute I do pay to those before me who laid it down and paid the way. It is good faith. What a fun intro, I kind of wanted it to be a little bit longer, but I also think that it was a great length for what it was. This is gonna be a long album, so yeah, keep the intro short. <laughs> and she says, she says in the intro what she's trying to do. She's trying to pay tribute to the ones who came before her, to ma who made the records that she grew up and loved listening to. We're setting the stage, she's going back. Back in time. Going back to basics. Yes, that was it. And that was a really memorable hook. Track number two, Makes Me Wanna Pray, featuring Steve Winwood. She said a new reflection. Christina's like, this song Reflection's gonna follow me wherever I go. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna make some new lyrics about it. I'm alive, and it makes me wanna get down and pray. Pray, pray. Make me wanna get down and pray. Pray, pray. Say, make me wanna get down and pray. You got 
want to pray. That was fun and it did a really good job I think of blending what I understand some of the themes of this album are going to be. One, going back in time, you know, jazz, soul, and those sounds, those genres, blending with the new, blending with the modern sound of Christina. Steve Winwood was a great choice. I don't necessarily know that I heard his vocals, but that gospel influence is there. I don't know the full history of the song Higher Love, but he's one of those people that's really one of the first people that we think of as, you know, the blue-eyed soul. Um, so he's, it's a really, it makes sense for the two of them to be on a track together because Christina Aguilera is also a blue-eyed soul, right? Also, the theme of this new love in her life, this person being a reason that she's got a lot of hope, a lot of energy, a lot of excitement and passion. She's singing about this person also and this love that's making her want to pray. Awesome, cool. So these are some of the some of the themes and relationships that are gonna be going on throughout the album. This is great. Track number three, Back in the Day. Back in the day, they used to say, play that song, get it going in a band play. And still today, you hear me say, play that song on my lawn, Mr. DJ. No time to check, matching in a fool. Uh, it had to it had to progress for me before I was really sold on it um, because at first I was just kind of like we're going back in the day okay that's basically what we said in the interlude why did we need to dedicate another four minute song to this on this double album that we got here um, but then she really started you know dropping names <laughs> not just of artists but of their songs and I think the point really was to go this is where the music that we love came from, right? Etta James, Marvin Gaye, Billie Holiday, uh, Ray Charles. She said, these are the ones who made the way for me. I think this set her apart a little bit from the other people who were singing in the early 2000s uh, because she said, I, I know where the genre that I love and sing in comes from. I know that the creators of this music were black Americans, and I'm gonna put some respect on that. This is a dedication. I'm here for it. <laughs> All right. Track number four, the Grammy Award winning, Ain't No Other Man. <laughs> So many things I love about that song. That's one of the ones I grew up on. At one point, I thought that I could vocally match all of her ad libs at the end. If that was true, it's certainly not true now. I can't do that part. <laughs> I loved this song growing up. It was so different from anything else on the radio. And it captures that old school sound so well. Um, you know, horns, horns were popular in pop music for a while and still are in some places, but the way that they recorded the sound, it, it's like they put a little filter on it where it kind of sounds like it's coming out of an uh, old record player. Ah, uh, I love it. Track number five, Understand. Many I had to cry, but you had many more of your own. You had to try. But just don't get out and you're here with me now, yeah. Oh, I think I'm made to be Oh, yeah. You could just be my man. Made to be, made to be. You got to be. And we're ready to have to climb. Oh, I can see to your eyes. Suddenly, I'll be alive. So 
So that song sampled Betty Harris's Nearer to You. My thing with Understand is it was a little hard to follow. I think the vocals got in the way of the lyrics. I truly don't know what other lyrics there were to the song besides I made you think you don't understand. It made it hard to, you know, lock into the track and like it. Maybe it just needs a few more plays. I don't know. I, it wasn't my thing. Um, all right then. Track number six, Slow Down Baby. Stop. Slow down, baby. I can tell that you're here to me. Cause you know you can look on your board, but you just can't touch. Hey, touch I like that. Slow down, baby. Hey. I'm not your lady. Oh, mm -hmm. well, you're never gonna get from me cause I'm with someone. Slow down, baby. 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 Slow Alright, so that feels like a good time to mention that Mark Ronson was one of the producers on this album and he produced that track. I think you can tell Mark Ronson had been around for, you know, about 10 years before Uptown Funk. Um, and so he was still kind of a relative newcomer at the point where Back to Basics happened. I love finding out about producers and, you know, how long they've been in the game because Mark Ronson is one who has crossed over onto like top 40 in pop radio now, but he's been doing more <laughs> since before Uptown Funk. I love Slow Down Baby. It had a really, really catchy chorus. It was actually pretty catchy from the beginning, but once that chorus, you know, played through, I was like, I'm sold on this one. I like Slow Down Baby. Track number seven, Oh Mother. It was the day that he turned on the kids that she knew she just Okay, uh, so that was another one of Christina's songs about her abusive childhood. Um, and her mother! doing the right thing and getting the kids and herself out of there and keeping them safe. Cool, cool. I'm much more likely to listen to that one than I'm okay. Ooh, ooh, I just, mm, y'all, I don't like I'm okay. She does a great job, but it's just so painful and uncomfortable. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. That was a single in some countries, okay? I don't, okay, I guess y'all, if y'all like hearing songs like that on a daily basis, fine. Not me. Track number eight, Fuss. Ooh. A little bit of Fantasia going on. You know who you are. Those are songs from Stripped. Is there someone that she wrote songs, like half of Stripped with? I have some research to do in a minute, but I'm gonna finish this song first. Hey, I moved on, sang my songs, I've got no regrets. Looks like I didn't need you. Still got the album out. So FUSS, F-U-S-S, -S, stands for F-U, Scott Storch, who was a producer for like half of the album Stripped. And the story is that Christina originally was going to have him on this album, but she and her team or somebody, I don't know who exactly it was, refused to pay to fly Scott Storch and all his team out to the studio. So he refused to come without their travel expenses being covered. And Christina was like, what are you, what? Are you kidding me? No, no, we'll make the album without you. Wow, that's, that's a big deal. 
That's very, that's a very public way to talk about a feud. Tea! Whoa, that is some tea. Mm. Fuss. Track number nine, On Our Way. Oh, I thought that was my <laughs> computer doing that. Oh. Hey, wait. I like this. To better days, better days, oh. Let's say we turn the pool. Move on from all the time. Should have left our time feeling. What is there more to say oh. that for each other? Oh. Wow. Thing. If I was on the team for this album and I heard On Our Way, I think I would have scrapped it from the album. Um, or maybe at least put it in a different place. I was really, really excited with the fuss interlude. Like I thought something, I thought something banging was about to come afterward. Um, and then I, I heard that piano at the beginning and I got really excited. And then when her vocals came in, I just thought that that piano, in, that piano, Backing the track was so interesting and I wanted to see it go further and dig deeper. Um, and for the most part, I wasn't a fan of her vocals singing over the piano on that track. Anyway, track number 10, Without You. So don't you from Christina, the layered harmonies, ooh, and then just all the different tones that she used in that song. Oh my goodness, she went from belting, just having that really, really soft head voice and just, ah. There were moments where I was just like, her voice is cascading. Christina's like, let me show you how many things I can do that the other girlies can't. <laughs> Track number 11, Still Dirty. <laughs> That was like the spirit of dirty, but with a throwback sound. Like she, <laughs> she said, I know some of y'all didn't like that one, but you can just expect more. It's not going away. I've opened Christina's box and I'm not closing it shut ever again. <laughs> and that line where she was like, maybe you're insecure in your own skin. There's a lot of things that can be said about when an artist does something in the public eye that people consider scandalous. And the people who just come out of the woodworks to offer their commentary on what is art? What is sexuality? It just, it says a lot more about them than the subject that they're criticizing. And Christina said that, yeah. Track number 12, Here to Stay. And I know some people wanna criticize me. Some feel better about themselves. So say what you will, time will reveal. In the end that I will be here still. Uh, 
Uh, I think that's another one that I would have scrapped. I loved the horns. I loved the horns in the back that I also think that a lot of these would have been really, really fun live. Just because these are the instruments that you want to hear live, right? I would, this is something that I think I would love to see a concert of. However, on the album, this one coming right after Still Dirty, I just felt like she was saying the same thing that she had said in the track right before. So I don't know that it really added something to the double disc. Track number 13, thank you, dedication to fans. <laughs> Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. That sampling and splicing of Genie in a Bottle at the beginning. So she's shedding some new light on those lyrics. Like, one, I was a Genie in a Bottle because like, you know, you got the whole rub me the right way self worth situation and all of that. But also, she was a prisoner of her old management. And now, she's been set free. So we're going, we're going, we're taking a step back to the beginning of her career as well as the 1920s, 30s music. Ah. Oh. I absolutely love music. You inspire me to keep on living. So what you have to say? So thank you for sending right by me. I, I will always love you. So thank you. Before him, the word he got me, Vidal, said, más fuerte. My name is Carlos Valenzuela. Okay, so they've got all kinds of sound bites. There's even one in Spanish. Perfect. Well, yeah, when you got a whole Spanish language album. I wish there'd been more than one Spanish soundbite. This is Shane Burroughs. You're a classy, honest, wonderful, naughty, nice, ravishing, impressive, seductive, and sexy. Christina, thank you so much. Please never stop. So people are saying. That was cute, but it was too long. That was five minutes. We get it. You got a great relationship with your fans. It was a little, it was a little cheesy. God, there's just, there's so much. And I know it's a double album. There are some pieces in here that's kind of like filler. Now we're on the second disc of this double album. This is track number one, Enter the Circus. Come closer, you won't believe your eyes behind this curtain. With us something you've never seen before. Are we, are we, is this, is this world building for Baby Jane? Is this, is that what's going on here? We're setting, we're setting the stage again, I guess. Some weird lines being thrown out there. Hmm, okay. Track two of disc two, welcome. Welcome to the greatest show. go and try and find a performance uh, from the from the Back to Basics tour because I feel like this would make a really, really great intro to the set list. Is that what she did? I can just see Christina like descending on a little seat, you know, with some hanging from some wires, singing this. If she didn't do that for the Back to Basics tour, I hope she did something better because it just, it fits so perfectly. Christina, is your alter ego Baby Jane or Harley Quinn? What is going on here? I feel like there's an element I'm missing. Like, is there a, a story with this half of the album? Is there a visual piece that I'm not seeing? I'm just really confused 
where on an album that you know opened with saying we're gonna do some throwback sounds and all of that where does the whole P.T. Barnum part come in to jazz and soul and blues and classics and all of those? I'm just having a hard time locating the sound of most of this album in the location that has just been created with these past two tracks. Let's see what else happens then. Track number three, this is a classic, Candyman. <laughs> I love the sound of that song so much. She did Andrew Sisters, but gave them lyrics that make people blush. Ooh, that's fun. That's fun. Eee! I honestly, I, I can't, I don't know another song that gives me the same feelings that Candyman does. Like the way that they took an old school sound and gave them some naughty lyrics, but made it so catchy and cohesive. It's just like, ah! I don't know what the whole circus setting thing was going on, but Candyman, Candyman, Candyman. Track number four, Nasty Naughty Boy. Come here, big boy. Cause I wanna give you a little taste of the sugar below my waist, you nasty boy. So where are we? Wait, wait, hold on a second. That just took back, that took me back to a memory. <laughs> this song I have heard before, actually, on a road trip with a friend. We put Christina Aguilera on shuffle and it was just, you know, her top 40 songs that we recognized and already knew up until this one came on. We'd never heard this before. But I felt like I lost my virginity listening to this song. I need a I feel like I just learned a few tricks from listening to that song. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm, I'm gonna say what I was tempted to say at the beginning, um, but then changed my mind about because I think it has to do with, you know, how the song is crafted. Um, I'm not really a big fan of moans on a recording. I think, you know, they're meant to turn on, but they turn me off sometimes. If it's just, you know, if it's too much, and at the beginning, I was kind of like, mm, I don't know. I just think, I think it's a little cheap. Um, when, I only, I only think it's cheap when that is their thing that makes the song sexy, okay? Christina started off moaning and then her vocals were what was really, really sexy, okay? Like that was the dynamics and the control she had of her vocal qualities on the song, that was what was really, really sexy. And that's why I will permit the moans. But there are some songs out there, recordings, where the artist will moan in different places. And I just kind of go, ah, I'm sorry, no, that took me out. No, nope, I'm done, sorry, bye. Not the case with this one. Nasty Naughty Boy was Thrilling. Track number five, I Got Trouble. I got trouble, trouble, trouble. Wait, I just want to hear Christina Aguilera's voice on an old record player. I just, I love that effect that they put on her voice. Ah! Okay, okay. That's a secret show. 
felt like was just there to help Christina say, in case y'all haven't figured out that I can sing, let me literally make everything sound like I am on an old record that you grew up listening to. It also reminded me of A Guy What Takes His Time from Burlesque. I can't wait to listen to that album! Track number six, a big one. I love this one, Hurt. I would hold it with my arms So there is some false information going around about this song that I feel the need to offer correction about because up until I started doing research on this album, I believed this false information. Um, a lot of people think that this song is about Christina Aguilera's father, which to a certain extent it is, but they go so far as to take the story from the music video as this song and think it's literally about Christina Aguilera's relationship with her father. In the music video, Christina Aguilera plays a girl in a circus um, whose father dies and she never got the chance to like, you know, say kind last words to him. Um, and I thought, as many other people did, that the song Hurt was chosen and written because Christina's father was actually dead and this was about her actual relationship with her father. But a quick Google search will show you that Christina Aguilera's father is indeed still alive to this day. I feel dumb, but I'm comforted by the fact that knowing that there are many other people who also believed this. No, um, the song is actually about the songwriter Linda Perry's relationship with her deceased father. Um, Linda Perry also wrote Beautiful, which was originally for Pink. That's some tea there. But I'm all out of tea. So her, no, Christina Aguilera's father is not dead. It was Linda Perry's father who passed away. Um, and Christina is just very, very good at channeling her relationship with her living father. Anyways, Hurt is amazing. Hurt is still one of her biggest songs and it's just fantastic. But I had to put that correct information out there because I know that there are still a lot of people who think Christina Aguilera's father is dead and that this song is about him. I'm laughing at myself. I'm laughing at myself. Not you. I'm laughing at myself. Track number seven, Mercy On Me. Love is the man that I ask to Christina. Don't ever think that she's gonna keep it at the same level for the whole song, cause she will take off at one point and you're not gonna be ready for it. So you gotta stay on your toes. That's what happened to me. I thought the first, you know, verse and, uh, I thought the first and second verse and chorus were getting a little repetitive. Um, and then I finally like locked onto, oh, she's singing about, she cheated on a man, please Lord forgive her. And then she brings in that higher belt. 
And I was like, oh, no, I got too comfortable. Nope, nope, nope. Comfort, get rid of it. I said, get rid of my seat because Christina took it. Track number eight, Save Me From Myself. It's not so easy loving me. You're gonna save me from myself. Myself, myself, you're gonna save me from myself. Standout track right there. There is not another track on this double album like that one. The level her vocals were at was so close. I felt like she had her lips on the microphone. Like that's how close she was. You heard every little breath and her, ah, oh, it was so light. It was so light. And then the instruments, it was just a bunch of strings and guitar. I gotta say though, this album is kind of all over the place. At the beginning, it would set itself up to be kind of cohesive, you know, just a bunch of throwback sounds, paying tribute to the people who came before her. And now we've just crossed through so many different scenes. I still don't really know what the circus has to do with everything. And then that that one, that was a standout, but it also just came out of nowhere. Like, you know, what, what was the choice there? I liked it. It's just, whew, it's very, very hard to make a double album cohesive and stick together, all right? So, last track, track number nine, The Right Man. <laughs> So many years have gone by, always strong, tried not to cry. When I'm standing in the chapel, wearing my white dress, taking the chance. Ooh. 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 I finally found the right man. And one day, my little girl, got divorced. Oh. Wow, I would almost believe that I was there on Christina's wedding day hearing that song. It's just strings, a choir, and Christina's voice. Like, I, you could put that in a chapel on the wedding day. Ah, I felt I was, I was transported. Oh my goodness. What a composition that one was. What a way to close it. Yeah, see, I'm just kind of like, <laughs> from where the album started, and where it ended, they're just like two completely different places. It's very hard to connect them over the span of what, 22 tracks? Yeah, 22 tracks. So here's the thing. Here are my thoughts about Back to Basics. I loved it for the most part. I think it could have been cut shorter, anywhere like three to five tracks shorter. There's things about the length that make it really, really uh, not cohesive. Um, but when it shines, Ooh, it shines, okay? I think they did a great job of blending those old sounds from the 20s through the 50s with modern sounds. I think I like the second disc all around more than the first disc. It was a little bit stronger, I thought, throughout. Um, maybe because it was shorter and so they had to be a little bit choosier. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Send me more stuff to react to. And I will see y'all again very soon with more Christina Aguilera albums. Bye!